hello students uh, today we are going to study mechanism of action adverse effects and uh, uses of nasal decongestants now nasal refers to the na nasal air passages and decongestants are the agents that reduce congestion so the agents that reduce nasal obstruction or nasal blockage are called as nasal decongestants so nasal decongestants reduce nasal congestion now in order to understand nasal decongestants let's first understand what is nasal congestion now nasal congestion is the difficulty or obstruction in the flow of air in and out of nose uh, that causes difficulty in breathing uh, through the nose now this congestion or obstruction is caused due to swollen uh, nasal passages and sinuses due to inflammation and this inflammation or swelling is caused due to inflamed uh blood vessels located or present in the nasal mucosa now let's understand the process of uh, nasal congestion with the help of a flow diagram now look at this flow diagram now allergens like uh, dust particles smoke uh, pollen now even the uh, chilled air or the cold air is inhaled and uh, these allergens they reach the uh, nasal mucosa now in the nasal mucosa these allergens uh, uh, for example uh, the dust particles here stimulate the mast cells now this causes degranulation of mast cells and there is release of histamine now histamine dilates blood vessels located in the nasal mucosa now this increases permeability of uh, these blood vessels these blood vessels become leaky and there is leakage of fluids uh from the blood in the nasal uh, mucosa that is there is exudation of uh, plasma in the nasal tissue now this leakage of plasma causes uh, inflammation of uh, nasal mucosa there is edema and swelling of the nasal mucosa now apart from this inflammation also stimulates uh, excessive secretion of mucus therefore Uh, on one hand there is inflammation of uh, nasal mucosa on the other hand there is uh, excessive secretion of mucus so this causes uh, nasal obstruction and uh, the process is termed as a nasal congestion now the normal or the, the common causes of nasal uh, congestion are the common cold flu allergies uh, sinusitis and uh, symptoms Uh, the very obvious symptom is the difficulty in breathing through the nose then rhinorrhea that is the running nose because of uh, uh, leaky blood vessels uh, then swollen nasal tissue as we have already discussed and uh, mucus also builds up in the nasal passages because inflammation leads to excessive secretion of mucus uh, now nasal decongestants uh, they reduce nasal congestion now these nasal decongestants uh, stimulate alpha 1 adrenergic receptors uh, these are sympathomimetics and they produce uh, vasoconstriction that is constriction of smaller arteries and arterioles uh, in the nose uh, in the nasal mucosa uh, throat and uh, paranasal sinuses now due to vasoconstriction vascular permeability of blood vessels reduces uh, the blood vessels become less leaky and less fluid is leaked in the nasal mucosa and this reduces inflammation of nasal mucosa and apart from this because of the reduced inflammation there is reduced secretion of mucus and thus nasal congestion is reduced and thus nasal decongestants they reduce nasal obstruction uh, so as already discussed in detail Uh, nasal decongestants reduce nasal congestion they stimulate alpha 1 adrenergic receptors they are sympathomimetics and uh, since they are sympathomimetic they cause uh, constriction of blood vessels in nose throat and paranasal sinuses now the most uh, common decongestants are xylometazoline uh, pseudoephedrine uh, phenylephrine and these are indicated uh, and these are indicated in conditions like uh, cold sinusitis allergy Uh, rhinitis etc now uh, let's talk about the uh, different types of uh, nasal decongestants now first decongestant is the xylometazoline now xylometazoline is alpha agonist 
uh, and therefore it uh, causes a constriction of uh, nasal blood vessels and therefore it acts like a nasal decongestant. Now xylometazoline is meant for the topical application and it is used as nasal drops and nasal sprays. Now compared to pseudoephedrine and uh, phenylephrine, uh, xylometazoline is uh, less efficacious. However, it has a longer duration of action of 12 hours. Now, regular use of uh, xylometazoline for long periods should be avoided because it uh, causes impaired mucosal ciliary function. Now, mucus uh, in the nasal passages is not cleared by cilia and further uh, this causes accumulation of mucus in the nasal cavities and the formation of mucus plugs which further worsens the situation. Now apart from this uh, use of uh, long periods, use of uh, xyl xylometazoline for long periods can also cause atrophic rhinitis and uh, anosmia. Now anosmia is a loss of uh, sense of smell and this occurs due to persistent uh, vasoconstriction which is induced by nasal decongestants. And uh, when xylometazoline is used for longer than 3 to 5 days, many patients may experience rebound congestion after withdrawal of the drug. Now next uh, nasal decongestant is the pseudoephedrine. Uh, primarily it uh, stimulates alpha adrenergic receptors and the stimulation of alpha 1 adrenergic receptor is responsible for the constriction of uh, blood vessels in the nasal mucosa. Uh, it also possesses weak beta 2 agonistic activity. It is administered orally. Uh, it's highly efficacious and its uh, duration of action is 4 hours. Next uh, decongestant is the phenylephrine. It is a selective alpha 1 agonist. It is used topically as well as orally. Uh, topically it is used as nasal drops. Duration of action is for 4 hours. Now very important uh, side effects of oral decongestants. Now the most uh, common side effects of uh, oral decongestants is the CNS stimulation uh, like uh, nervousness, insomnia, irritability, anxiety, headache. Uh, then cardiovascular effects like palpitation and tachycardia and in addition these drugs they can elevate uh, blood pressure, they can cause increase in the intraocular pressure and they can aggravate urinary obstruction. So this is in brief on pharmacology of uh, nasal decongestants. Uh, please note that this video is meant only for educational purpose and if you find the video useful kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.